Welcome to Garden Plants with Jim Putnam. Let's talk Stella Ruby Magnolia. Stella Ruby Magnolia is a banana shrub hybrid and has a lot of the same great characteristics, including the fragrant flowers of a uh, banana shrub but it grows in a very upright, narrow habit. Uh, this plant can reach 10 to 15 feet in height, probably six to eight feet in width, something like that, but can actually be kept narrower than that. It's evergreen. Uh, as you can see, I'm shooting this in the middle of March. It's held up just beautifully uh, through my winter. It's budded up and ready to bloom. The growth rate on Stella Ruby is actually pretty quick. This one was about half this height. Uh, 14 or 15 months ago when it went in the ground. So it's actually, uh, if, if it's happy, uh, well mulched, weed free, uh, it, can, it, can, it can get to growing pretty quickly. Uh, this one was introduced uh, by Pat McCracken, same person who introduced um, Sunshine Ligustrum, which I think you can see over my shoulder uh, right here. Flowers are gonna start on this plant uh, sometime in late spring. And the beauty of this is where regular banana shrubs will just bloom out all at once there in the late spring or early summer, maybe into early summer. This one will continue to have some flowers on it. And I've seen this thing flowering well up into fall. So heavy flowering early and the buds are now on the stems. Won't be long here before some of these actually start to open up. We get a few 80, 80 85 degree days. And then some repeat flowering through the summer and into fall. And again, super, super fragrant. Stella Ruby is hardy in zones seven to nine. Uh, I always talk about this, these evergreen shrubs that are hardy in zone seven, eight, nine, 10. If you're in zone seven A, where this thing is definitely hardy, spring plant it so it has a season under it before it goes into its, to, goes into its first winter. Probably, um, this thing has been really, really cold hardy for me. It wouldn't surprise me in a protected space as long as it was getting enough sunlight that it would work in zone 6B as well. I don't know that, but I mean, it just seems like as hardy as it's been out here uh, in this open space, um, that it is probably a little bit hardier than that. Uh, full sun is best on this plant. Uh, it will take part shade. I think if you drop below a half a day of full sun though, it start, it's gonna start to get thinner on you and probably not have, the, uh, not have as many flowers along the stems either. Let's talk about some uses for Stellar Ruby. This is a great specimen plant, which is what I've done here. This is, I've got one of them in this space and I have it surrounded by other evergreen and non-evergreen pieces, uh, perennials that are asleep right now and annuals that will be planted around it. So it's just the centerpiece of a bed. If you have a two-story house and you're looking for something on the corner that gets tall and narrow, Stella Ruby will be a perfect choice for that. If you're in zones 7B, 8, 9, this is great uh, integrated into as a screening plant, great screening plant. Uh, you know, I, I talk frequently about not using all the same thing in your screen. So it, it you know, as a mix um, in a screen, perfect plant for that. This is not a picky plant. As long as it's getting, you know, you're putting it in a sunny enough area and it's gonna be a well-drained space. It would not wanna sit in water. Uh, when you're planting it here in my clay soils, I will leave them mounded up just a bit. Very drought tolerant once established, but drought tolerant, drought tolerance is great. You know, it means that the plant can survive on its own without you. That doesn't always mean something's going to thrive and be its absolute best if you're just letting it get established and never paying attention to it again. So keep in mind that, you know, when it's abnormally dry, this is a plant that I'd probably want to put some water on because I'm, especially if you're trying to get some growth out of it, uh, and it's going to do its best flowering, stay fuller, uh, you know, not, not drop interior leaves, you know, if it, if it gets too dry. So again, very, very drought tolerant, but you know, um, monitor it, think about it during the summer, if it goes two, three weeks without, without rain. These can be pruned um, after their spring flowering. I don't think you're gonna have to do a lot of pruning on it. Literally, this one's never been pruned. This is how it grows. I imagine that at some point I'll get some crazy limb out here. I can cut that off whenever. If I needed to do some general shearing to keep it thinner, again, I would do that after it, after it flowers heavily in the spring. That new growth will probably get, end up giving you some additional flower buds that will bloom a little later into summer. It's a very, very pest resistant plant. Um, deer tend to leave things alone. And again, I always frequently talk about flower, uh, 
If you have deer issues, fragrant plants tend to be your friends. Uh, most, but not all, tend to be your uh, friends in those types of landscapes. So Stella Ruby Magnolia from the Southern Living Plant Collection. I really, really love this plant.